Some people will say, well, you know, I, it helped a lot of health issues. I felt a lot better, but I didn't lose as much weight as I wanted to. So I guess it didn't work for me. And I always ask them, okay, what exactly were you eating? What exactly were you doing? Or maybe they're having other problems as well. Or maybe the problem is that they're feeling better, but they're not feeling as good as they thought they would or not having as great of a benefit as they thought they would. And uh, you sort of talk to them quite often they are still including other things and uh, especially like artificial sweeteners and sort of junk that I would, I wouldn't recommend anyone put in their body. Um, and then, you know, not eating enough and not eating enough fat in particular. Fat is, is very important. You know, it's not a, it's not just a calorie source. Calories are a bit of a weird concept anyway, because we're talking about the heat energy that comes off after burning them as opposed to the chemical interactions, these very complex organic molecules have in our body. Um, you know, you, you can't just interchange, you know, you know, three ounces of glycine with, you know, one ounce of, of, uh, of steric acid and, and think that you're coming out equal. I mean, these are different chemicals that have different properties and, and responses in your body. So uh, it's it's very important to get enough fat. Most people don't eat enough fat because we're afraid of fat. And we're like, oh, fat's bad for me. The fat's good for you. You should eat the damn fat. And uh, I go, I think a, a good way of testing that is uh, by our stools. Uh, our body has a limited capacity for absorbing fat. Uh, from our bile. We make bile from our liver that's stored in our gallbladder that's released when we eat a big fatty meal. But we generally, most people, according to the books, textbooks, um, we create about 800 milliliters to a liter of bile a day. And whatever the amount that we make, there is a limit to the amount that we make. And so you really have a hard time absorbing fat without bile. It's a very, very like small percentage of the fat that you eat without bile will get absorbed. And so once you run out of bile, most of that excess will go out in, in waste. And so it's really, it's really hard to overeat fat because you just have a physiological cap on the amount that you can absorb. And so I just go for big air. I try to get a lot of fat and then I see, you know, if if there's fat coming out, that'll keep your stool soft. So people think, like, well, I, how am I going to get, uh, how am I going to, you know, go to the bathroom? I, I'm not eating fiber. Well, 66% of all animal species are carnivores. They don't eat any fiber and, you know, they go just fine. It's actually fat that drives the digestion. And so if you're getting enough fat, you'll have enough for your body to absorb as much as it wants to, because I think that's your body's making an amount of bile because it wants a certain amount of fat in return. Uh, I don't think your, your body just doesn't make things, it doesn't make a random amount of bile because it wants a random amount of fat. This is a very controlled uh, uh, nutrient that it wants to get in. And so you get enough for your body and then there's a bit extra that sort of spills over and that keeps your stool soft. So you know you're getting enough fat if your stools are still soft because there's a bit of excess fat and your body's absorbed all it wants to and then there's a little bit extra. Uh, if you're getting really dry, hard stools, some people say like, oh, I'm getting constipated. Um, and uh, that that that's why generally people aren't eating enough fat. Uh, but some people get mixed up with constipation uh, and frequency of, of bowel motions. Even if you go once a week or once every two weeks, that's not necessarily constipation. Uh, that's just frequency. You're absorbing 98% of the meat that you're eating. There's, there's garbage that people say like, oh, it takes 10 years to, to break down meat. Like it's not in your body for 10 years. You know, it's just it's like if it's in your body for two days, it's now out of your body in your feces, right? So that doesn't make any sense. You can't absorb uh, fiber at all. And that's what they said. Oh, this is good that you can't break it down and digest it because it gives you something to peristalsis and move through. Okay. Well then why isn't a steak doing that? If you can't break down a steak, wouldn't that be doing the same thing as fiber? Wouldn't that be good for, as fiber for the same reasons? And you know, they don't have an answer for that generally, um, because I haven't thought about it, but no, you absorb 98% of the meat that you eat because you're biologically, uh, designed to eat meat and you get almost everything from meat that, that you can't, that uh, is available. And then a little bit extra comes out. So you're going to have much less waste, right? And that's, it's in the name. It's waste. It's wasteful. You didn't need to eat it. It goes out, right? And so you may go once or twice a week, but as long as it's that soft, normal consistency, then that, then that's fine. If you're eating a lot more fat, than your body wants, then you're just going to have loose stools. And this can cause uh, people to have diarrhea. You know, Joe Rogan called it disaster pants for the first two weeks. You know? And um, uh, and that can be just because you're, you're, you're eating a lot more fat than your body 
can absorb. And sometimes your body will then see like, oh, hey, we're getting enough, we're getting more and more fat. Hey, let's 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 get more of this and starts increasing the amount of bile that you make, uh, and then you can absorb more fat. Uh, another reason why people uh, get disaster pants early on is uh, is because they're they're still drinking coffee. Most people drink coffee in general, and then if you do that on carnivore, you don't have all these big blockages of of fiber and which is just wood cellulose, right? Um, in your intestines that are just slowing things down, so it increases motility, but it's still trying to move a lot of, of matter through, and it and it's just going slower. So when you take that out and you don't have all these blockages, you drink the same amount of coffee and this just goes right through you. And so, and that can actually hide constipation. So someone says, oh yeah, I drink coffee every day, but yeah, my stools are, are normal. They're nice and soft. Okay. You're probably horribly constipated. It's just that you're, you're masking that with the laxative effects of coffee and uh, artificial sweeteners as well. Most artificial sweeteners act as laxatives as well. So most people are still using artificial sweeteners, usually in the coffee, and then they they have that problem. So that's another that's another thing uh, that that I think is good to watch out for. You want to get enough fat. You want to get the right the, the right amount of fat, and that's a good way of testing it. While you talk about coffee, it gets me thinking about somebody who say makes a lot of the switches we're talking about today, and they're eating basically an all meat diet. But say they're having coffee, tea, and maybe some sauces on their meat that you know have some plants in them. It gets me thinking about all the different chronic diseases we talked about before that can be healed or greatly reduced with a diet like this. How hardcore does somebody have to be basically to get these benefits and to heal? If they're still having coffee, tea, and some sauces on their meat, are they still going to have miraculous healing benefits or do they have to go all the way? Well, you're going to get a lot of benefit from this because you're going to be removing a lot of the causative agents that are that are um, making you sick. And you're also gonna be getting a lot more of the beneficial nutrients that are gonna keep you well. So you're gonna get a lot out of that. But I do think that you you get the most benefit from really just getting rid of everything, just like that watch gear analogy, where you know if you don't have any sand in the gears, even a couple grains of sand are going to cause a, a, a noticeable problem, right? But then when you dump a whole bunch of sand in there, you know, a few extra grains, it's not going to make as big of an impact as those first few grains, right? So, uh, and I've, you know, I've noticed that just in myself, just getting rid of just the last vestiges of all plants. I just, it just changed dramatically my health and, and my my patients and clients that I've worked with uh, and even just 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 friends and family and people that I've just helped out over the years, you know, getting rid of just the last bits of these things seems to have a very, very big and lasting effect. Um, however, you will get a lot of benefit just eating a lot more meat, really not being afraid of the fat, eating a lot more fat and just cutting down on all the rest of the garbage, getting rid of the alcohol and the carbs and the sugar is probably the biggest thing. Focusing mostly on meat, maybe having some things on the side, you're going to make a, a huge difference. And especially if you're just down to sauces and seasonings, yeah, you're going to be you're doing so much better than everyone else that it's uh, that you'll you'll uh, really have a lot of advantages and a lot of benefits. Some people are much more sensitive. Some people have serious health issues. Really do need to try and be as strict as possible. You'll still get benefits. You'll still get a lot of uh, uh, health. Uh, benefits from just reducing the other things that you're eating and increasing the amount of meat that you're eating. But say for people with autoimmune issues, they are so much more sensitive to these things that they really do just need to be just meat and water. And in fact, most of them do the best on just red meat and water. And I think that has a lot to do with, again, what we were talking about with the animals, what the animals were eating. Ruminant animals like cows uh, they have these, you know, four chambered stomachs and they, they're actually very good at detoxifying things, uh, even if they're not normally meant to eat them. Uh, monogastric animals like us and pigs and chickens, um, they don't have all of that biomechanics and machinery to really detoxify the hell out of these things that they're not supposed to eat. And so they're more sensitive to that. And so because we're the feed that we give, a lot of livestock like pigs, like chickens, uh, or things that they don't eat normally either, a bunch of like soy pellets and things like that. They're not supposed to eat that. They don't have the biomechanics to break down these things 
uh, the way they should, and that gets into the meat, and that gets into you. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. That doesn't affect me at all. But someone with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or rheumatoid arthritis, they actually could start having uh, uh, symptoms from that. Um, you know, uh, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson's daughter, she came to a carnivore diet out of desperation, basically. She had such bad rheumatoid arthritis that she had to have two major joint replacements by the time she was 16 years old. So I think it was like her hip and ankle she had to get replaced. That's, I mean, that's, that's really bad. So her body was just falling apart from, from, a, uh, from a joint perspective. It was breaking down her joints to such a degree that she needed a joint replacement. Not, not even you know, all 80 year olds or 90 year olds need a joint replacement. You know, she needed one at 16. She needed two. And so she found that there were dietary measures that she could, she could impose on herself that, that gave her a lot of benefits. She found those benefits and she worked her way down to a complete elimination diet and just eating meat and water. And all of a sudden she's off all of her medications. She's, um, feeling great. She's not having flare ups, but she notices that basically any plants will give her a flare up. And so this is, this is out of necessity that she doesn't eat plants. And she's also noticed that other meats besides, besides like red meat, beef and lamb can actually give her a response. So she, she just can't eat pork at all. And she has uh, said before on a, on a, on a podcast that she did that if she has any pork, that, that will give her as a bad a response as if she like ate fruit or some some plants or something like that. And so she really has to avoid that. So some people are going to be more or less sensitive. That's that's you know a, an extreme case. Not most people won't be in that situation. But you know it, it depends on the individual. So if you're having uh very serious issues, I would recommend really going down bare bones, just meat and water, any autoimmune issues, just red meat and water for at least three months. Clear your body, clear your system, let your body heal. And then if you want to start adding some things back in, maybe some chicken, beef, pork, dairy, uh, or eggs, you can see how that affects you, you know, in, with the autoimmune class people. Uh, really six months, honestly, for, for people with autoimmune is better. Uh, that gives the gut a chance to heal and, and heal up those tight junctions so you're not going to be letting in a lot of these things that normally don't get in. But in, in people in general, you know, if you don't have a specific health issue, you don't have diabetes, you don't have uh, um, an autoimmune condition or something else, you know, and you want to sort of have some sauces or some seasonings, you know, go for at least a month. I would really recommend three months of, of really just meat and water. And then you start adding in one thing at a time and you see how it affects you. You add, some, you know, add some coffee in or something like that, see how that affects you. And uh, and if it's, if it's not affecting you in, in ways that you really care about, Fine, you know you can include that, but but at least you have a clean palate with which to test it against. Um, you know, most people will just get better just eating more meat and eating less of the other garbage. Um, I know a number of, of athletes, rugby players, and and uh, you know top professionals um, uh, in Australia and the U.S. that do a carnivore diet and and absolutely swear by it, uh, but also ones that aren't quite there, but they're just eating a lot more meat. And they've cut out carbs, they cut out processed crap and uh, and all the different you know sugary stuff and vegetables and things like that. And so they're really just eating meat and maybe they're having some rice before a game or something like that because there's you know they they you know they're still of that mindset that they want to have some carbs before. Yeah, I find that I'm much better without carbs. I talk to a lot of people when they just do strict carnivore diet, they don't need any of that. I actually just had a guy, uh, Tom McDonald, who's an AFL player for like 12 years. Uh, He's in his 12th season in the AFL, the Australian uh, Football League. And he was doing carnivore for a while. He was doing keto for a long time and, um, and felt great with that. He did carnivore for like six months. He said he felt, you know, better than ever. Um, but that he would get, he would get some like leg cramps and things like that unless he had some, some carbs, uh, you know, before a game. And so that's just what he does. He eats just mostly meat, but he'll have a bit of rice, uh, before the game because that, that seems to help with his cramps. There, I think there are other things that he can do. And I've talked to him about that, about what to try in the off season to uh, overcome that. But, uh, but even then, you know, just by getting rid of so many other things and just eating mostly on meat, you know, he's he's doing a lot better physically. I know a guy who in America is on the U.S. national team um, for rugby, and he was telling me that his uh, testosterone levels literally doubled 
in just like three months, <laughs> like going on a carnivore diet. And, uh, and he's not even hundred percent. He's just mostly carnivore. He's eating mostly meat and he has made this, this and his performance is going up. He's feeling better. His testosterone is obviously, you know, gone way up. And so you get a ton of benefit just eating more meat and eating less of the other garbage. But yes, some people do need to be very strict about it. And I just feel the best when I'm, when I'm strict as hell and uh, I like feeling my best. So that's what I do. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. No animal eats the the variety of plants that we do, and I think that that's causing and driving uh, most of the modern non-communicable chronic diseases that we face these days. It is the complete elimination diet because it gets rid of everything.